Good morning. First thing I want to do is I want to say thank you very much for you contributing your most valuable asset to be here this morning. You've got your time. And I always want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, my part of the presentation is supposed to help you understand the basic concepts of what is property management by real estate commission's concepts. What is it I'm supposed to be doing if I am a property manager? Second, we're going to take a few minutes to look at Monday. And third, we're going to take a look at code of ethics and some of the other rules and regulations that we're supposed to know as a cop in. So with that being said, let's just take a moment to look at a piece of property you have listed. There it is. <laughs> oh, this is a little bit unusual. Man, I've had it on the market eight months now. Haven't got a show yet. <laughs> so my seller comes to me and goes, come on, help me out of here. At least get somebody in to rent it so that I won't be losing money. Can I do this? And the answer really boils down to the following concept. What am I supposed to do by real estate commission rules and regs? But first of all, let's back up and look at our first real estate law. Our first real estate law says point blank that if I am receiving compensation, oh wait a minute, I don't even have to receive the compensation. Even if I just have the promise of receiving compensation, and I perform real estate brokerage acts for an individual, and that's the big key for others. If I'm doing those things, then I must be a real estate broker, and I must have it in writing. So what is exactly real estate brokerage, and why is that applied to property management? Well, let's define that for you by continue looking at our real estate law. The law says, point blank, if I list, offer to list, sell, offer to sell, okay? Lease, offers to lease, sales are offers to sell leases, or rents or office to rent. I am practicing real estate brokerage. So let's take this a step further. Here you are. You are actually, all you're doing is supplying a rental for the property. This unusual property you have, correct? Well, if you're supplying a renter, are you practicing real estate brokerage? Yes. Yes, according to the rules. On the other hand, what if I'm just taking care of the property? They got somebody in there, and what I'm doing is making sure that the rent's collected. I go over and do repairs, that sort of thing. Well, by definition, that's not really property management for brokerage practices. So let's make sure we understand, however, that if we're offering to rent or offering to lease, then we are practicing real estate brokerage. All right, so I'm doing that now. So what's the big deal? Well, this means now that if I am going to rent that unusual property, the first thing I must realize is that I must have that in writing. Why? Well, again, let's visit our real estate rules. Commission rule number A104. Somehow, none of that got in there twice. Okay? What A104 says, point blank, is this that every agreement, every agreement for broker services must be in writing from the beginning or at some point and signed by both parties. Now the rest of the agreement, or the rest of the paragraph, now breaks down whether I'm dealing with a seller or dealing with a buyer. And since we're talking about a listing here, let's look at what it says about a seller, which is in the next paragraph, or the next sentence. The next sentence actually reads that if you're going to perform an, a service for a client, this must be an agreement, and it must be in writing, for brokerage services between a broker and an owner. Now this is the biggie, between the broker and the owner from its inception. So now, let's go back to our unusual listing we had earlier. Your seller now wants you to simply procure a tenant to put in there for the few months that it's left. Hopefully that you're gonna sell the property, correct? Well, what's the deal? Well, folks, that means according to the real estate rules and laws, I must have something in writing from the beginning. 
So if you are renting properties or your seller without a written agreement, you're violating our real estate laws and our commission rules and regulations. Wow. So let's make sure that we do not do that, do not trip up. I've had a number of people stop me in the halls as I'm teaching and asking me, well, why can't I just have a tenant you know, help this person find a tenant? And the answer is because we're required by our rules and regs to have a management agreement in place before we can do that. Once we have this management agreement in place, let's understand that there's a couple of things that is included in this by real estate law and commission rules that must be there. First of all, as many of you are well aware, fair housing is a big issue to me. And the real estate commission laws and rules and regulations say it's also an issue to them. So every agreement for brokerage services must have a fair housing disclosure included in it. So if I'm going to do this, find a tenant for you, I've got to do the fair housing disclosure. Next, let's make sure that we remember that it's sales transactions in which I have to give the brochure. So if I'm helping a person find a tenant for a piece of property, I'm not required to deliver the brochure, discuss it, or decide what it is I'm going to do. Can I? Sure. Not a problem. Not a problem. But it's not a problem. What are some of the essential elements according to the rules that we must have in an agreement? Well, first of all, both parties must be identified. This is a requirement, so you've got to identify the seller, you've got to identify your company and you. Consideration must be spelled out. Folks, this is not something you want to leave to the whims of the seller. As Fraser mentioned earlier, <coughs> this needs to be negotiated up front and needs to be spelled out in your agreement. Both parties must be legally competent. And you guys remember what that means in North Carolina? Y'all remember the three rules? 18, sane, and sober. <laughs> so make sure before you sign, you haven't been uh, inebriated, right? So as we take a look at these requirements, we also want to make sure that the, the, a contract is to perform a legal act. Now, there's one other factor that Frazier brought up that I think is extremely important for us to realize. And that is, we must be very specific in our performance. And, this, and when I say that, what the commission and the rules expect us is this, is that we have spelled this out. Stephanie mentioned the concept of implied agreement. That's not what we're supposed to be doing, is it? What are we supposed to have? An express agreement. What does express mean? I spell out everything I expect you to do, and you spell out everything you expect me to do. We reduce that to writing and then sign it. So that's what we mean by be specific, express the agreement, have all the details outlined. Now that we have that all set up, now we must have a rental agreement. Now having been a property manager before, and I'm sure Stephanie will agree with this, if you're going to use a standardized property management agreement that has a blank center, the first thing you should do is take this property management agreement and show it to the seller. And say, are you comfortable with me using this form? Now, me personally, when I do this, I, have, I turn the form sideways, and I have the seller actually sign in the margin on the side, and says approve, and then slash the date. So now I have documentation that seller approved for me to use that form, and so any of my folks can also use that form. So, if you're not set up ahead of time with a rental agreement, you really can't do this, right? You've got to be prepared. You've got to be prepared. Now, what 